Hey there everybody, welcome to Eckert & Sons Trading and uh, I'm Eckert and this uh, obviously is not my son. This is I my... made the sons. <laughs> yeah, she made the sons. This is my wife Corinne, she's joining us for this uh, memories and memorabilia uh, time. Tonight we're going to talk about uh, Bush Stadium. It's a building, a stadium that was very uh, near and dear to our hearts growing up. Uh, both of us are from the St. Louis area. I grew up in... Uh, South St. Louis and South County. Uh, my wife grew up in Belleville, Illinois. So right across the river over in the St. Louis metropolitan area. Metro East. Metro East. And so she grew up over there. And uh, one of the things that we had in common was we loved going to Bush Stadium uh, as children. We didn't know each other back then. We didn't meet each other till 1999. But uh, we do have a special memory that has to do with our, our marriage and Bush Stadium that we'll share in a little bit. But uh, just want to share a few memories about that stadium. It's actually called Bush Stadium 2 now. Um, it was built in 1966. I did not know that. Huh? I did not know that. Well, yeah, because now we have Bush Stadium 3. That was Bush Stadium 2. And the original was Sportsman's Park. I always thought it was Sportsman's it's Park. It was Sportsman's Park, but they called it Bush Stadium when August Bush took over the uh, the Cardinals. Yeah. You learned something. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so it was called Bush Stadium 2, and it was kind of that. It was built in 1966, and it uh, closed down in 2005. Uh, we have a lot of memories there. It was kind of that, that bottle cap look, but it had some very... The signature, uh, this is a little model of it, had these signature uh, arches around the top, and it was just... Uh, and you could uh, walk up and down these little things as yeah. you left. Yeah, those ramps. Actually, believe it or not, did you know if you walked up one and you just kept walking, walking, walking up to the, the top, do you know how many ramps you'd walk up? Six. I was going to guess six. Uh, six, yeah. So, anyway, you would have guessed correctly. But this was the stadium that we grew up going to. Um, I have a, a nicer... Um, or not a nicer, but a larger uh, one in my office, but due to COVID-19, we can't get into my office at Baylor to look at it. But anyway, here's a model of the stadium. Hold one moment, please. I distinctly have childhood memories of this right here because all of the people in the stadium would feed out of this little bridge, right? Yeah, it seemed like a lot of people would walk out and at the end of a game, that bridge would be so crowded after the game, and I remember holding on to my dad's hand, trying not to mm -hmm. get lost in the crowd, but all the vendors would be out there selling the um, souvenirs and cards and pennants and, and hats and stuff. So it was a, you know, it was a kind of a typical stadium for that era, era but it, uh, it was very unique to us, and it was a, a lovely place for also, us to grow up watching baseball. Also, may I point baseball. one more thing out that yeah. I liked about it? If it is that it was a complete circle. You don't see that very often anymore, and I realize why. I always liked that it was a complete circle for one reason. You could do the wave effectively. Yeah, it was a pretty cool place yeah. for the wave. But it was hot in there, yeah. uh, the, the, this, this stuff. Um, uh, I'm going to let Corinne just share a few memories uh, uh, about growing up and going to the stadium, and, and uh, then we'll move on. To be fair, when I was a child, my preference for the baseball game was for snacks. <laughs> I remember going up to games and we would just give you a slight diagram. We'd be up in the nosebleed top tier, but shade. <laughs> um, I can remember going to games with my mom and my dad when I was little. Uh, Bob Forsh was a pitcher. Oh, I touched my face. COVID, COVID. Um, and he hit a grand slam one time when we were at that game. Oh, well, you were at that game. Yeah. Well, I think he may have hit two. That was at one of them. Okay. I should have done research, but I don't do that. I got this at Bush Stadium when I was a little girl, and it's a little plastic Clydesdale. And I still have it, which is a big deal because my, you know, we throw things away in my family. So yeah, he followed us around, and he's now in our Cardinal closet. So I love him. But my dad was a huge Cardinal fan, much like this one. And his favorite player was Bob Gibson, number 45. And he was always number 45 in softball because they played every night of the week. And you had your dad's glove. My dad's glove. Yeah. And he was a pitcher also. So 
There's her dad's glove. Like, we still I, use it today. I don't. Her father. The reason we're talking about her father, like, is he passed away in 1992. 92. And yeah. I did take a bait. A break from baseball from 92 until about 98 when the whole race for the Mark McGuire yeah, to break the record happened oh, wow. and I remember watching that big momentous occasion with Christy at her apartment and we almost missed it because we were flipping channels yeah because it was like uh, every time Mark McGuire would get up the bat the the world would stop and, yeah. and focus in but on we that. we weren't watching the game we were more watching a show but I made her flip every once in a while to we watch the it. game yeah so um, some of my background was just growing going up uh, growing up going to the games uh, back in I remember the early 80s 1982 as early as that and, and watching the 82 Cardinals, 85, 87. And then when I got into the 90s, I was lucky. My, I've shared before, my mother started working for the Cardinals. And so in high school, uh, from 1992 to 1995, I was an usher there at Bush Stadium. And then from 1996 to 1998, I was what they called a runner. Uh, and one of the things I was going to share dun, 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 dun. Uh, from that time was in 1996, here was an employee handbook from that time um and if you're it, it's just, it was just full of really cool facts it was basically if as an usher if somebody came up to you and said hey where can i buy nachos or something you could look in here and find out but then they'd ask um things like trivia questions and and uh things and here, there was a trivia who would ask questions huh people would come up and they'd say hey how many people does uh bush stadium seat and i was going to ask that answer? question and at that time, in 1996, the total seating capacity for Bush Stadium was 56,173. But with standing room, it was 57,673. And the circumference of that stadium was a half mile on street level. So just fun facts. exited off this bridge. <laughs> they didn't all go there, but a lot of people did. Um, Here's a, a commemorative book from the from the uh, stadium when it when it shut down in 2005. That was kind of a sad time for a lot of us, and they were building. It was interesting that as they were finishing up the season in one stadium, they had already started building the other, and uh, they had to demolish the old to uh, build part of the new. But this book was pretty cool. This ended up being a gift from my grandmother uh, to commemorate Bush Stadium. Um, but what we wanted to share was a little memory back in 2000 uh, and one of the reasons Bush Stadium was so special to us. And I will let Corinne share that memory. Well, we had been together for a whopping six weeks. We met um, in 1999, December, and it was February 11th, 2000. And I came in from Springfield, Missouri. It was a Friday night. And Valentine's was that next week. So we were celebrating our Valentine's Day on February 11th, a Friday night. Right. And as we were driving downtown to go out to eat, we were going to go to the landing and go out to eat. Somebody was weird. And um, I had given him a really nice leather wallet for Valentine's Day. Because nothing nice speaks I love you like a new wallet. And No as, money. No money. Because we, were, yeah. we weren't poor. Anyway. We're driving down the interstate and somebody is like, the lights aren't on in the stadium. Why aren't the lights on? They're always on. They used to light up those arches at night. And this was in February, so it wasn't baseball season or anything. But they did keep those lit up. And, uh, most and I thought he didn't like the wallet. <laughs> <laughs> and so we kept driving and we go to dinner. And then we're sitting in the spaghetti factory. Yeah. Is that it? And we're waiting, and he's got his coat like this. And he's like, it's too long of a wait. We gotta go. And this guy's pretty laid back back then. You were pretty laid back. And I was like, okay, maybe he's angry. So we went to Planet Hollywood, and we sat down. We got a table like that. And we sat down, and then he's like this in the chair trying to see all the memorabilia. She's making this a really long story. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what is your problem? We can get up and walk around. He wouldn't walk around. Longer story shorter, we eat 
and we get out, and he says, we're going to go swimming. No, don't go there. <laughs> Just fast forward. We get into a carriage. He got a we carriage. We jump into a carriage at the Adams Mark Hotel. We jump into a carriage, and we go to where? Bush Stadium. Bush Stan Stadium. Musial Statue. The Stan Musial Statue. People might be interested in the long version. No. The Stan Musial Statue. This was uh, it at the Bush at that Bush Stadium. They've moved it now to uh, same statue. Same statue. There's a smaller it. one, but they have the okay. big one too. Okay. Keep going. And he asked me to marry him. I thought I was long-winded. I've lived with you a long time. Okay. He asked me to marry him at the Stan Musial Statue. Yeah, right here. I proposed. This is uh, right here at the base of the statue. Just and, pretend. And he got down on one knee and sang a song to me. I sang a song. And had her. the ring. And I had the ring. Popped the question. And she said yes, thankfully. Because she was quite a catch. And really uh, she still is. But anyway, we but this uh, we ended up collecting this. This was a, uh, a, a drawing by a guy named John Steckley. He was an artist who drew things around Missouri uh, landmarks. So we have this. One day we'll have to get it framed. We've but only had it about 18 years. Yeah. But that's our uh, Stan Musial statue story. A lot of people grow up in St. Louis and they'll say, I'll meet you at the Musial statue. That's a, a common place to meet. Well, I got engaged at the, we got engaged at the Musial statue. Uh, and it was just the two of us and the carriage driver. So it was really cool. It was low key. He asked and, me first. Thank goodness I didn't say yes. Who? The carriage driver. Yeah, we'll see. Um, so fast forward a few years to um, 2006. The Cardinals went to the World Series, and uh, long story short, there we got tickets. And uh, it was, this was a, at New Bush, though. The, oh, I'm sorry, that was at New Bush. That doesn't make any sense doesn't. to talk about it here. Can we talk about the last game of Old Bush, Bush Two? That would have been in October of 2005. Does anybody have a wild guess about who played the Cardinals in the last game at Bush Two? I don't know. The Houston Astros. No kid. I didn't know that. Yeah. And you know what else they won? And I think you might still be able, they have a piece of the um, trash can that they beat to win that game. <laughs> did she? See what she did there? She, she's snarky. Um, so when they tore down Bush Stadium in 2005, um, my brother, Jeff, my, my stepbrother, Jeff, he uh, stumbled upon a chunk of the old stadium. And so this is one of my uh, prized possessions, a, a piece of old Bush Stadium. And uh, here's a little paint chip from it, uh, gray, gray paint. But uh, this is pretty exciting for me to have. I love having this uh, in my collection. And uh, also one last thing I will share. And this is a, a photo, it's in a bad frame, but this is a photo of me when I worked there, and my grandparents, uh, Alan Dolores Eckert, and my brother and sister, Tyler and Abby uh, Eckert, and um, this we just witnessed Mark McGuire hitting batting practice in 1998, and that was a big deal. Batting practice would draw like 20,000 fans back at that time, and so we got down on the field, we watched them play, or watched them uh, hit batting practice, and then the uh, photographer, I forget the gentleman's name, but he took our photo at that time and so that's a, a sweet picture for me he had mcguire had just walked out of the stands my grandparents have passed away over the past few years but pretty cool photo so anyway uh, i think that my dad was able to go on somebody got him to get to be able to go onto the field one time there was they were away or it was off season or something but he got pictures standing on the field of the whole stadium oh really i'd love to know where those are but yeah <laughs> It, it was cool. I mean, it was a neat stadium, and it, the, it would be a very electric time anytime they would have uh, opening day, and those Clydesdales uh, would pull the beer wagon, and August Bush uh, Jr. would ride in there, and they'd, they'd circle the, the warning track, and it was just a cool time. And Ernie Hayes was the organist back then, and he would play Here Comes the King, and, and it was just a, just a wonderful time back, back then in the uh, Bush Stadium, too. So anyway, just thought we'd share some of our memories and especially the one about us getting engaged because that was a, a pretty special time. So the Musial statue and that Bush Stadium uh, has a special place in our hearts. So. Very special. I'm glad they kept it.
That would have made me sad if they. Oh, the done. statue! I the thought statue. they tore down the no, stadium. No, no, no! Yeah, the I'm glad statue. they kept the statue. That would have made me sad. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I may never be invited back. Oh, she'll be invited back. Uh, so like and subscribe the page. Please subscribe. Say it. Can I say oh, it? okay. Please like and subscribe.